Hello there, you beautiful people. My name is Willow, and welcome back to Supreme Commander Forge Lines Forever for a 4v4 played on Setin's Clutch. Before we get into introducing our players with Team 1, of course, at the top and Team 2 at the bottom, please direct your attention down below to the buttons like subscribe, bell, join, and super thanks. All of them are super helpful if you could click them. Even hit the dislike if you don't like the video. And let's get into starting our introductions with the blue UEF player going first air by the name of Brian Swain. And he is rocking this air position for Team 1. As we move on to his southern rock position ally, a red Cybran going first First land by the name of Leto 2 and he is rocking this rock position the carry position generally of the sentence as we move to the middle with the front line position of the purple seraphim by the name of XX7 then last but not least for team one we have an orange seraphim going first land by the name of Fergus 1080 now we're going to move on to Team 2 with the blue UEF player going first land in the air slot by the name of Bob the Noob. And then we can move up to the rock position going in the same order as we did for the other team. We have a AFK Millenwisecom that is dark green and seraphim. And uh, I'm going to be going up against him in a tournament very soon. In fact, it may be today, uh, maybe like an hour after this cast, I might be streaming it. So good luck to him in that tournament as we move on to his frontal player going first land as a Cybran by the name of Joseph8395. And he may have gone first air, in fact. I lied. He went first air. And then we have a purple Cybran going first land by the name of GFY Depony. And with all of our players introduced, we can go ahead and look at the map. We have seen it so many times. 15,000 reclaim. Only really in the rock positions uh, point is the only one with real natural reclaim. You have this 113 in between all three other players, but it's insignificant. And then you have this large chunk in the middle, the three Salems, and then the smattering of T2 and T3 land wrecks across the map. And it's going to be interesting to see how these players get on with killing each other. And while we wait for them to get on with it, I'd like to say thank you all for all the support in May. We have already managed to get more views than we did last month, and it's only May 17th. So you all rock and keep sharing it around. Keep telling your friends about it, and hopefully we can go ahead and catch up to the duelist in subscribers. He recently passed 2,000. Go over to his channel and give him a thanks. He makes super quality content. And yeah, that's uh, about all I have to say as we now get into the action. First drop of the match coming out from Leto2 as he drops his side island. Going to be getting a couple of engineers down over here very early on. Will be able to, of course, build up a factory and secure that island, assuming his opponents do not do any kind of shenanigans with large drops or a large amount of T1 bombers, whereas we have a much bigger transport drop coming out from Millenwise for his island. He is a fully laden T1 Seraphim transport. Count them six engineers to be used for his dropping pleasure. And, uh, yeah, the, <laughs> the Seraphim transport ribbed for her dropping play pleasure. That's a, that's a, that's a sentence I did not expect to come out of my face today. As a PD has already been built by Joseph8395 here in the middle, he's even going to try and build an anti-air turret. All of this building may not be worth it. That's only one Zooey to be dealt with, or even a very, very dedicated comm can just walk up and blow that PD away. So we'll have to see how these players do on the reclaim front as XX7 shows up to the front a little bit behind the pony. We also have a T1 bomber flying around somewhere. Um, not quite sure where that was. Uh... It looks like it's right here. It's just going to be getting some mexes and some expanding stuff. For Joseph, I'm going to go ahead and put on a cinematic camera as I grab a bottle of water really quick because my throat is quite scratchy. A 
apologies for that, but you know, gotta stay hydrated and gotta protect your throat if you're gonna be doing a whole bunch of talking all of the time as I am. And I just want you all to know that you all are very, very beautiful. As we take a step back to look at the state of the map, we do have a bomber out from Leto that's managed to pick up a kill, is going to pick up a second, and there is a large group of engineers right here, which I'm sure he would be happy to get a turn on and kill, but unfortunately going to go down to the interceptors of GFY, Depony. And let's look at Navy, because there's a glaring uh, issue if you are a average sentence player, as in... There's only one player with Navy at, like, five minutes. Come on, you gotta get into the water a little bit sooner than this. Especially you, Millen-wise, if you're planning to go up against me and the We Cut Meat army. Uh, as this is a little bit concerning, of course, for Team 2. Team 1, uh, gonna be happy with getting into the water first. Early Bomber, also out from Fergus, to maybe do some harassment down onto Millen-wise. Millen-wise is ecoing very well, though. I believe he is currently the second richest man in the game with 45 mass a second only player ahead of him is leto in the other rock position with 49 mass a second millen wise is going to get his toes acquainted with the water as he builds a naval factory and his opponent fergus is just going to continue to build boat and send him south which seems to be a good idea in my opinion i think if he can get some scouting down which don't know maybe he already has and see where this first factory came out he can very easily get a deny and force millen wise into that tech 2 airplay which right now he has not quite gone for as of the moment but forcing a tech 2 airplay is always a good idea as a beach player sure you can say well then he'll have torpedo bombers and i don't want to deal with torpedo bombers uh but a player who is forced into torpedo bombers feels a lot better to go up against than somebody who is still in the navy with torpedo bombers and generally the rock player will get those as in the middle we have a few units out from Depony trying to help over here he's built a pd to help joseph and he has also sent some engineers to help with reclaim of his own speaking of reclaim Depony has the most reclaim in the game surprisingly uh not either of the front players at 4.7 thousand xx7 right behind him at 4.4 thousand joseph with the early pd play did not manage to outdo xx7 surprisingly and he's only at 3.5 thousand reclaim and overall, that's how we're going to be seeing the game line up in the reclaim numbers. Over here, a factory has been built by Millen Wise and was going to build a submarine, but definitely does not complete that here as the engineers building more factories just die. These frigates, as long as they stay within range of this, will manage it. Uh, to at least a kill on the factory. If they leave as they are right now, that submarine will finish up and that will be very unfortunate or Fergus 1080. Speaking of Fergus 1080, he is the highest rated player on Team 1, whereas Depony is the highest rated player on Team 2. The beach player is both the highest rated. A bunch of bombers out from Brinswine, who is currently just absolutely harassing the middle, just trying to make sure that XX7 wins it. And with no real interceptor play coming out from Team 2, or maybe all of the interceptors have already been cleaned up, it just seems as though these bombers have free reign until there's enough Sky Slammers in the area to shut this down. And if you're building Sky Slammers, you are critically not building tanks. So a bit of a dicey situation for Joseph here in the middle. He had that first bomber out from Brian, which really set him back by killing off some mass extractors. Of course, with Brian going so heavily in the T1 phase, you would have to imagine he's not going to get to T2 quite as quickly. Janus now coming out for Brian. Whereas on the other side, we have some T2 power being thrown up, and assumedly we will see these players reaching for that Tech 3 air in no time at all. In a higher rated game, we would have already seen both players with T3 air at 7 minutes, and absolutely destroying me with a Strat Bomber, as seems to happen in all of my games. Over here in the Central Causeway, a few Mantis trying to sneak by, a T2 PD going up as XX7 has finished up T2. Uh, that T2PD going to be cancelled by the Mantis, which is going to be a little bit upsetting for the Seraphim player. Although, I'm sure he will be happy to scoop up all of this reclaim, which he is currently getting. And he will, of course, be able to throw all of that reclaim into more PD if he so wishes. 
He is a little bit light on the land forces, does not quite have the same production as his opponent, but he does have T2 air, which is very, very interesting coming out from the frontal player of Team 1. We'll have to see if he can manage some kind of crazy plays against him or against his opponent. A submarine did manage to come out from that factory for Millen Wise, although there is still a very dominant naval presence over here for Fergus. And Fergus is going to be sitting on Tech 2 Navy as his opponent is struggling to even produce Tech 1. As this production shutdown out from Fergus has proven very effective, although has not slowed down Millen Wise very much, at least economically, I don't believe. He's at 65 mass a second. Fergus is at 52, so he is behind economically, but making strides in naval combat. Whereas over here to the east, we have a bunch of frigates now out for GFY to pony, starting to harass and deal damage onto some of this production and AT1 mechs of Leto. But Leto just really not worried. Over here, he's built up a couple of torpedo launchers that's going to really deny the T1 units from dealing any damage. And he has a couple of factories, so he's not going to be shut out of the water. Neither is Millen Wise, I have to clarify. Uh, Millen Wise is still in a decent position. He's just been very stifled in the water so far. Has opted for the T2 tech and is now starting to build torpedo bombers. So very good play out from Millen Wise. In the central causeway, we have T2 PD now going up for XX7. So he is going to be happy and assured in his dominance over that central causeway. A... Mass extractor going down over here. Don't know what quite caused that. Probably some kind of airplay. I doubt there's a tactical missile launcher doing anything of a note in that regard. As units start to group up and build up over here for Deponi, he is currently sitting on a relatively large group of frigates against just four frigates. So he may be able to deal some early damage down onto Leto, who is ecoing like a madman, our first player, to surpass that 100 mass a second mark. And once you pass it, you never go back. Well, generally, you don't go back. Once you, once you go 100 mass, you don't go back, right? Am I right, boys? <laughs> What is, what is this? This cast is, oh, this is horrible. Go, uh, whenever this is over, go watch my Twitch stream where I'm going to go destroy Melon Wise in a tournament or get destroyed by him. Although I'm pretty confident. I think me and Sergeant Syphilis will be taking down this Australian powerhouse. That is Melon Wise as torpedo bombers stray into range of frigates. They, of course, will take that minor AA damage, as, of course, there's also interceptors in the air to kind of stop this. But most of the frigates over here are going to be cleaned up by torpedo bombers, and that's going to buy some breathing room for Millen Wise, which he so desperately wants and needs. And uh, he's going to be able to get into that T2 naval stage very soon. He has his first T2 naval HQ going online, and I guess I shouldn't say first, as you should only really need one, as it's at 62% and raising quickly. We have T2 Navy not yet started up on GFY to Ponies Naval Production. Do we have T2 Navy started up over here yet? We do. We have T2 Navy just now starting with a fresh factory for Leto 2. And these players are settling in. Let's go ahead and check on the air game. T3 Air achieved and now producing with a T3 P Gen finish for Bob the Noob. Whereas Brian Swine. Uh, Brian Swain. Brian Swain currently working on T3 air, and he's probably going to be in a rough position if any kind of strategic bombering starts to happen for Bob the Noob. Although, not sure if he has identified his lead as of yet. I'm sure they can look at the base and very clearly tell that he has T3 air and his opponent does not. So, might be a scary situation for the dark blue UEF of Team 1. Whereas over here to the west, Destroyer is showing up on the scene for Fergus. And that is going to be a scary proposition for Millen Wise. He's going to need to come up with some kind of counter to these laser boats. The laser boats are invading and they are very, very angry. And his counter is torpedo bombers as that Destroyer almost assuredly going to die to torpedo bombers. Very unfortunate for Fergus, not quite able to keep the interceptor count high enough to stop his opponent from just destroying him with those air-based oh-so-dumb 
deadly units. We have the AA of the... Whoa, I threw my phone off my desk. Whoops. Uh, the AA of the cruiser. Very powerful AA that comes out from the cruiser. It has two different AA guns. As you can see, it has that large flak gun, and I clicked the wrong one. It has a relatively large flak gun that does a ton of damage, and then it has a more direct fire AA gun, a Gatling gun of sorts, that is good for taking out individual targets. The Seraphim cruiser, incredibly great at taking down air units. Most of the cruisers are, as I've said before, and will say again, Aeon got shafted on that on their cruiser, the Infinity class, quite weak in comparison to almost all of the other ones, with a maybe an exception for the Siren, which is also quite bad. Uh, both the the Infinity and the Siren, really, really good at dealing with things like you know strat bombers uh not good at dealing with things like torpedo bombers in mass whereas the seraphim cruiser kind of gets the best of both worlds the governor is all right uh I'd, I'd rank it higher than both the siren and the infinity mainly because it has the siege potential uh with its mobile missile launcher but the the ethula Itha, Ithalua, the Ithalua is by far the best cruiser, hands down. <coughs> will not fight the uh, Seraphim Heathens on that front, as I will fight them on the front of the rest of their navy sucks. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, as we settle in for a relatively so far uneventful mid-game... Mid Millenwise slowly expanding his horizons, slowly increasing his sphere of influence, although needs to be careful, he is still outnumbered in the pure boat numbers, has a sense of security with the torpedo bombers. But as soon as Fergus, or maybe Brinswain, managed to get up a large air force to protect his navy, he could be in a little bit of danger. Whereas on the southern side, GF White a pony. Still not producing Tech 2 naval units. Has a ton of assistance on Tech 1. Could be coming into some issue as Barracudas and Sirens start to be produced by Leto. A Barracuda can deal pretty much infinite damage when it's up against uh, nothing but frigates. Considering the frigates cannot really shoot back. So it's going to be an interesting kind of trade down here between these relatively large T1 navies on the southern pond. We have some ASF now for Bob the Noob showing up over here towards the northern side of his rock player's base. The cruiser over here trying to get some damage done with those mobile missile launches and may be able to pick up a couple of T2 mechs and may even be a mech or two over here that's upgrading, which would be horrible, horrible damage if is it is killed. There's a wave of torpedo bombers coming out as another naval engagement is brewing. Fergus, the bane of his existence right now is those torpedo bombers. They have just really stifled his options for affecting this match. The torpedo bombers coming in, targeting down a destroyer first. The cruiser, of course, is off to the side and not quite able to stop the torpedo bombers as of the moment. Or maybe the cruiser was killed off by the Navy a little bit earlier. These torpedo bombers are going to take a ton of attritional damage as mass cruiser seems to be the resounding answer for Fergus. He's producing pretty much nothing but cruisers now. And I guess these are destroyers now. But for a moment there was a bunch of cruisers coming out of that factory. Down here to the south, large naval engagement popping off between Leto and GFY to Pony. And I know it's Seraphim boats, so they look the same, but I will be able to tell you which one is winning. Right now, it seems as though GFY Pony is winning the naval fight, but I think he's, it's about to turn against him without any interference from the air. I think that GFY Pony is going to be slowly whittled down by the destroyers and the barracudas and the submarines that are currently in the water. And yeah, indeed, he wins the initial naval engagement where he is frigate on frigate because he's massively overpowering his opponent in surface to surface firepower. But now with the development of Tech 2 units coming in, that destroyer being a huge, if nothing else, a huge amount of HP to deal with 
using frigates and is definitely a scary proposition now for GFY to pony to hold on. He needs T2 units to start producing if he wants any hope of holding this off as he is starting to desperately throw units into the fray. He's going to need some support, possibly from his air player, as T3 mexes are starting to take damage via Medusa that were dropped over here by Leto. Leto playing a relatively high level of set and play here for being uh, only a 1200. He is really taking GF, GFY to pony to the, through the ringer. He's, he's dealing quite a bit of damage. Sorry for my inability to speak today. I don't know what it has been this week, but I've been having some kind of issue forming words and sentences in my head in a coherent fashion, very scatterbrained. And, but hopefully it's still entertaining. I know every time I sit here in a cast and I'm like, I'm sorry, it's shit. You all are like, dude, this this is great. This, 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 shut up. You're dumb. And I will shut up because I am dumb. As torpedo bombers do come in to try and deal with this, although Siren's already here to cancel counter. Of course, enough torpedo bombers do deal with Sirens. Although right now it's looking a little bit desperate for the purple Siren as he's building a bunch of T1 torpedo launchers in a vain attempt to stop this ever-present siege of his naval production and we might see our first player get knocked entirely out of the navy very soon T3 radar system the flood XR coming out for Leto as he begins to reach for the jugular of his opponent, Deponi. The torpedo bomber, or the torpedo launchers dying about as quickly as they were built. There's still a couple around this heavily assisted factory, although I don't know what GFY Deponi's goal is here. He has T3 air. Maybe if he can get up enough torpedo bombers to just not lose all of his naval production. He's playing to not lose Navy right now. He's not playing to win it. He's playing to not lose it. And his ally Joseph is also playing to help help his purple ally out as he is producing barracudas to try and help Deponi in this stalwart defense. Now Deponi producing a lot of torpedo bombers. If he can get rid of those cruisers and stop the reinforcing cruisers from mounting in large numbers, he can push this back. And maybe since he's gone for that T3 air so early and so heavily, he only managed to lose one T3 uh, mechs over here, luckily. But since he's gone for this T3 air, maybe he can leverage that into a win in this pond or just into overall air control, which can be very powerful on Zetans. Although time will tell, we will have to see as these destroyers and sirens and tridents I guess I should have said Salem's, not Destroyers. Salem, Trident, and Siren Hit Squad now turns its attention over onto Joseph, who's trying to produce Barracuda, as I mentioned earlier, to save his purple ally if this production fully falls. If the Navy is able to jam itself right here into the harbor, the T3 air that GFY Deponi has sacrificed so much for will be all for naught, and the question will be, he got T3 air, but at what cost? And that cost was his life. As if you lose your core mass and your main mass here on the beach position, you may as well not be in the game. We've seen more homeless beach players than we see in San Francisco. And over here to the north, a much more even engagement between the two Seraphim players who have so ugly... I don't know why I used ugly there. That was the wrong adjective. So, what's the word? Uh, disgustingly decided to go off against each other in the top pond, so I can't play favorites. Are slowly duking it out. Seems as though the torpedo bomber threat has been relatively negated by interceptors and, uh, and, and cruisers. So it's more of a heads-up naval fight. But in the time it took him to deal with the torpedo bomber threat, he has been matched in the Navy, as the destroyer counts for both sides, looking relatively even, a lot more frigates on the field for Fergus. I think this is a bad fight for Millenwise, 
Although we do get a very cool laser light show in any way, in either way, a bunch of Seraphim boats are gonna die. So it's a win-win if you ask me. Lots of boats now going down for Millenwise, who's gonna have to fall back yet again onto his defensive sword that is those torpedo bombers. And I know falling back onto a sword doesn't sound right, but you, a torpedo bomber really isn't a shield. It's, it's much more aggressive as torpedo bombers taking down some forward naval production for Fergus. Although Fergus won't be missing that naval factory as he is currently the king of naval factories on the map, sitting on a cool, oh man, six plus seven. Math is hard. What's that, like 13? I think it's 13. 13 naval factories. Did I lie? Does he not have the most? Nope, only 10 for Leto. And I know I'm not counting the T2 ones, but who cares about those? We're all here about the frigates. As torpedo bombers are trying to be used in a kind of last-ditch effort to hold on to the naval over here, I, navy over here. I did mention that Millenwise and Fergus were maybe on even footing, but it seems as though I was just wrong, and Fergus is coming over to show me the way to win navy and the answer does appear to be something i preach a lot which is more shit counters less shit and fergus he's got more shit he's ate a lot more food he's filling that toilet bowl and of course settings some would call it a toilet bowl i would call it a fun watch not so much fun to play Unlike Gap, where it's neither fun to play or watch. GFY Pony is facing death by a million cuts as Sirens, Salems, and the occasional frigates firing many, many shells of high explosive variety into the base of Deponi. Deponi desperately constructing shields, trying to do anything and everything in his power not to lose his main base, although it does feel like it is a question of how much time will it take for the Navy of Leto to take down the behemoth that is GFY Pony. He is doing an admirable job holding on as my voice cracks some more because I am not taking care of my throat. Mm, I am, a, in fact, a prepubescent boy. Uh, over here to the south, large land production facility now online for Leto, who is going to clear out these T3 mixes, at least assumedly uh, he will, as he is starting to become a real threat to Team 2. Team 2 needs to come up with a solution to deal with Leto. Any solution will do. Because right now he is taking Deponi to school and just serving him an ice-cold sandwich of naval and drop supremacy. That is a lot of scorchers to lose for a single mass storage. As Bryn comes in and loses one, two, three, four, five strap bombers to kill one singular mass storage. That mass storage needs to be put up on a subreddit called Fuck You in particular. I think he thought maybe there was still a mass extractor there, but no, that has been long since destroyed. That would have been much better used on maybe the commander. I don't think five would have won past a cyber commander with gun and stealth, but maybe I'm wrong. I don't quite know the damage of a ambassador. I guess we can look it up right now. 3100 damage so five times 31 five times three is 15 never mind that com would have been dead although the question is do you want to kill that com and i think the answer is yes as every single front for team two is failing and faltering right now as a yathoda is online and he is angry as he approaches the cybern base of Joseph. He is the Marty McFly. He's saying, nobody calls me chicken. 
as he walks headfirst all on his lonesome into the base of the Cybran, ready to wreak destruction down upon this forward base. The Gunthers will not help you here, and the bricks are too few in number as Joseph is going to be losing his base and critically losing the infrastructure that has allowed him to hold off the advances of XX7, who is now poised to win the game for his team. A chicken is no small threat. The Gunther is surprisingly staying alive a lot longer than I would have expected. As the chicken reaches deep into the base of Joseph. It's half HP, although you only need one HP to fire your weapons as a wave of stingers show up. I only see one or two flak mixed in here, although you only really need one or two flak to kill pretty much any number of stingers as long as the stingers don't shoot the flak. The Stingers will start dropping off in waves as the flak does fire into them. Holy stinger, Batman. Wow, that is the thumbnail. In case you were curious, that many stingers is the thumbnail. Very, very pretty display out from Bob the Noob, who is now dealing with a relatively scary land force using almost nothing but stingers, which is a respectable display. Millenwise still not forced out of the water yet, still using torpedo, bomber, tor torpedo bombers to sustain himself. GFY Deponi now producing SACUs. I guess he's maybe going to be hoping to get up some harms. He managed to weather the storm of building enough shields to protect himself, and some land units out from Joseph helped him clean up this area that was formerly held by his opposition. Did these mass extractors not die? Leto, you didn't kill the T3 mass extractors that you built like 15 T1 factories next to? Hell, at that point, capture them. As a large air engagement breaks out in the middle and Brian Swin, Brian Swain, I cannot get his name correct, uh, loses handily. And now with all of the gunships on the map we're going to be seeing these land forces cleaned up relatively swiftly needs to kill off those flax but once they're gone millen wise won't have to worry about this ocean of force for very long oh do we have some juicy juicy salt i'm only doing asf i need lots no you're building useless t3 arty that's for my pleasure <laughs> dude i'm losing to the enemy air player tough luck if you want air you can build extravaganza. Oh, you don't want to play in a team game? Air question mark? Uh, Russian question mark? Uh, somebody tell me what this says. They screwed me with all those bombers in the beginning from the air player in the back. Joseph, the first player to speak, not from team one. Can you give me some mass? XX7. We have a very upset Leto, as air has been a hard sticking point for him. As a wave of torpedo bombers come in, Galaxy is now trying to break the base. I still feel like Deponi is really fighting a losing engagement, losing a SU to in the water there to the, I guess that's to a T1 sub Barracuda and the, the various kind of torpedoes that come out from a Galaxy. This Galaxy is on life support, nine health a second. Torpedo bombers and T1 bombers alike will be killing it off very soon. Leto shows up with his own wing of ASF, deciding, as with anything, if you want a job done right, you got to do it yourself, and Leto has embraced that fully. Would like to see maybe Leto and Fergus spec into mass ca uh, carrier. They've both essentially won Navy. I guess you could argue Fergus hasn't quite yet. Uh, but winning Navy down here, you get a bunch of carriers up. One, they are like cruisers, but better, because they have a fuck ton of HP, and they still have just as good AA. And two, you can produce a lot of ASF very quickly, and we are now starting to see the odd aircraft carrier being produced by Leto. 
very happy to see that. Can somebody tell me if an aircraft carrier can produce aircraft while moving? I've always wondered why certain... Like, why does the Tsar and the... I get the Tempest and I get the Fat Boy, but why do the other mobile factories have to stop to build? Like, maybe it's something to do with the coding of the game, but it just doesn't make much sense to me. As down here to the south... There are a lot of frigates now built up for Fergus. The Stingers cleaned up that land force, although we are looking at a severely diminished Joseph. He doesn't have horrible mass income. He has 40 mass a second, which will allow him to build up a kind of mass fab farm back here. Although, for all intents and pur purposes, he's a homeless front player, which we have a lot of those in everywhere in the world, because... What do you see first when you're looking, when you're walking down the street? You see the homeless people, so they're in the front. <laughs> I, I don't know how that makes any sense. I think it was much more clever talking about homeless beach people and saying San Francisco. But, I digress. T1 bombers kill off another galaxy class. Unfortunate fate for those T3 boats. As GFY Deponi starting to get back into the Navy as this air presence has been irrefutably oppressive now for Leto. He does build a plan B personal sonar and radar stealth nuclear missile platform or of course a strategic missile submarine and we'll be able to maybe sneak that down here to the south. I don't know if Deponi has an anti-nuke. He has a nuke! He does have an anti-nuke. It's not loaded. But he has a nuke, so he's thinking big. He's think thonking real big with his big brain think thonk tank. As Millenwise is losing tons of economy, in fact, more than I would expect two cruisers. He's having a lot of trouble dealing with it. He's now starting to throw up as many TMD as he physically can and maybe a T3 shield for good measure. As Fergus has kind of jammed himself in between. Millenwise's army and his base, or I guess navy and his base, which is an awkward position for Millenwise to play from. He does have battleships now on the field. Do we have battleships on the other side? No, we don't even have Tech 3 Navy yet. He's working on it. That battleship will be able to get a lot of cost effectiveness, although all Fergus has to do to not lose any boats is fall back. All of these boats are, of course, faster than battleships. Although he will not be happy to fall back, as there is still a ton of reclaim, which he is trying to scoop up. Speaking of reclaim, let's look at these players and see who is out in the lead. Fergus is unsurprisingly at 42,000. He has so many engineers coming from these forward production facilities just to grab the reclaim out of every fight, and he's been winning fights. The Pony, right on his tail, 1,000 mass reclaim behind at 41,000. Millenwise at 30,000, and everybody else is half that or less. Or close to half that or less. So we will not talk about it. It is the thing that shall not be spoken about. The name that shall not be named. So, yeah. You know what? This is why it doesn't make sense to me. The, the submarine. The nuclear submarine and nuclear battleships can build nukes while moving. Why can't you build a freaking air force while an Atlantis is moving? That's what doesn't make sense to me. Another plan B. We're going to see mass nuke out of Leto to try and shut down Deponi, who is getting back into the Navy at a surprising speed. Currently already Detect 2 with a ton of assistance, going to be building Barracudas very quickly. He, it is an uphill battle. It is going to be difficult to deal with, as his opponent still has more income than him. Deponi and Leto topping the charts for mass income, both at or, ne or above or nearing 400 mass a second as all of the frigates for Fergus and the destroyers meander their way into the production lines. Are there enough torpedo bombers to stop this? Fergus, in fact, having his own torpedo bombers. Maybe he has enough air presence over here to protect this. No response out from Bob the Noob. Bob the Noob just letting Millenwise hang out in the breeze as torpedo bombers are starting to assist in the siege. A lot of reclaim is going to be dumped right here if this is a failed attack, and it doesn't seem like Fergus has enough units. He is running out of steam. He doesn't have the capability 
to fully lock Millenwise out of the Navy, which has been the story of this game so far. Millenwise has been barely holding on to a naval force at any given time. And if he were to be fully forced out, I think that would really be a, the last nail in the coffin for Team 2. Team 1 has been playing a stellar game, have been playing amazingly. They're only slightly behind economically, and you can attribute most of that to the mid players as, of course, Joseph being forced out of the middle quite heavily, quite harshly, I should say, it does not feel good. As here, the gunships roll in to continue to hold this off. These gunships have actually done quite a bit. All of the gunships are on two veterans, it would seem, not a single one below that. The Elite Stingers having a grand old time. How many nuke subs are we at? We're at two. Do we have a third on the way? We have a third on the way. Although Leto about to lose a nuke sub, which is going to feel very bad to torpedo bombers and barracudas. And I don't think it was very close to finishing up a... Ooh, that mermaid! ate all of those torpedoes mermaids incredibly strong anti or incredibly strong torpedo defense in fact i would say i think it's the strongest in the game the mermaid can straight up stop like two or three harms by themselves it is ridiculous just how many torpedoes it can effectively stop and air advantage is finally falling away of team from team two that's been the one crutch they've been holding on to for a very long time a nuke has been launched this time i believe over to the production of leto or no it's to the island of leto and this is not insignificant multiple t3 mechs is gonna go down a couple of t2 naval factories may also go down and those are producing critical critical cruisers and Bob the Noob has now been forced out of air. Not necessarily in the sense that he can't build it, but he definitely cannot afford to produce anything that isn't an ASF at the moment. Uh, Bryn Swain trying to help him out here by taking a very bad air engagement. The nuke does land. A T3 Max does survive with all of its accompanying uh, mass storage, so that's going to be unfortunate. Although... I would say he got two T3 mexes and two T2 mexes. Those would have been T3 at some point. So it is definitely not a blow that Leto is happy to take. Although it is one he can manage. Over here to the west. Battleship now built up for Millen Wise. Another about to finish. Or the, is the battleship numbers going to finally be able to allow him to force his way out of this naval blockade he's been in? Since seemingly minute one of the game. We have an artillery online. A duke. Where can that hit? Oh, that can hit the square root of dick and or diddly. <laughs> he can kill a T1 radar. And maybe some harms if he ground fires. And some anti-air. I mean, I guess when you have the weird range things like that where it hits outside of its range, but he can only target things within this range. That Duke that Leto was very upset about is indeed useless. Although, maybe he's expecting his opponents to be able to re-expand to this middle, middle base. Does, I guess, deny those mass extractors kind of permanently. As the investment to get them built up would be not worth it. The aircraft carrier sitting on 28 kills and rising is going to be happy to continue to just lay in to those torpedo bombers. Has one rank of veterancy and going to slowly recruit, uh, regenerate all that HP. Both nuke subs are alive and well. Although I cannot tell how far they have built because mobile missile launchers are making life difficult. Harms still being used as a creep defense against Leto. So this is going to be a very difficult position to siege now. GFY Depony has done an admirable job coming back in this game. Has managed to in stride take his beating. And is now getting ready for the counter punch. Millenwise has also had a stalwart defense in his naval 
attempts. He has not been forced out of the Navy. He has used air quite effectively to kind of subdue the aggression of Fergus. And he now has battleships. Which... This battleship's building a nuke, isn't it? Oh, this battleship's building a nuke. All right, spicy play. Okay, so in case you were cur curious about the Sarah from Battleship, this battleship, you see that orange bar? Uh, it's gonna go every time it fires, you're gonna see the orange bar go away. When they're building a nuke, that bar doesn't exist. You just have the solid bar. So that one's building a nuke, and that's how you can quickly identify as an observer if it's building a nuke or not. So that could be a spicy play. Does need to keep that battleship alive. It's a very valuable battleship now. Although with 49,000 HP and only more will and it can only get more as it kills off some units and gets some more veterancy. It can of course lose it but that maximum HP can only rise from this point. Three nuke subs. Can't tell how far any of them are loaded. Although a couple of them have been around, around for a very long time. If he could get a volley of nukes off I'm pretty sure Deponi will not be able to stop three nukes by the time all three of those are loaded. I could be wrong, though. Large naval engagement happening. Millenwise needs to be careful, needs to make sure that his nuke battleship does not get bogged down in this wave of frigates coming out from Fergus. As the Seraphim units clash with one another, the battleship's going to be able to deal with the frigates pretty handily, I would say. They will, of course, be able to kill them off with one or two volleys, although they are now fighting other battleships, which makes things a little bit more interesting. Some sick dodges actually coming out from the battleship of Millenwise. He's managing to be quite erratic in his movement, and battleships are more agile when, than you would think. You can indeed dodge artillery shells if you predict it just right from other battleships. Those two shells out of that battleship went in very different directions. As the fight progresses, I would say the frigate count is very dangerous now. The battleship building a nuke is nearly halfway done building its nuke. Although it is swarmed by frigates and losing HP at a rate that he would be certainly unhappy with. As the destroyer backline shows up and starts tearing down these frigates in mass quantity. Gonna have to be curious about how this goes. The other battleship gonna succumb to the battleship and frigate comb combined pressure out from Fergus. Although all of these destroyers are gonna be able to very quickly cut down these frigates. In the southern side, a large naval assault now coming out from Leto. He's trying to use the strategy that worked for him nearly half an hour ago. A nuke sub going down, unfortunately, though. I don't know if that was the younger or the older of the nuke subs. There is still one in play. Maybe it has a nuke built. Although the other nuke subs, unfortunately, I believe, are dead. At least the ones we saw earlier. The torpedo bombers, the cormorants, coming in to try and finish off this nuke sub, and it gets it. And with that, Leto is going to be very, very unhappy. He probably had enough ASF to protect that, but just wasn't quite able to make it happen. Four strategic bomberinos coming in to kill off a mass extractor. If these were given a shift G on these two mass extractors, they get both of them. The... Revenants getting tons of value, killing off quite a bit. Novex on the way for Bob the Noob as he cleans up these strategic bomberinos. And in the Northern Navy, did the battleship building a nuke survive? It did indeed. It's past halfway done with a nuke, but only has 23,000 HP left. Still more than a nuke launcher. A nuke launcher only sitting, oh yeah, nuke launcher only sitting on like 5,000 is what I thought. Around about it. Not, I guess it depends on which faction builds the nuke launcher. This duke sitting on 53 kills but only 3.3 thousand mass killed, so an idea of the low value targets it's hitting. At this point it's firing into mostly naval units of millenwise. 
which I guess is, I mean, T2 artillery is good at dealing with Navy. Maybe T3 is good too. Maybe he's got a sleeper play going on here. Battleships taking large volleys of torpedo bomber fire in this northern pond. In the southern pond, oh my word! Leto still dominant in the Navy, getting into the production lines. He's going to be able to slowly clear out these harms as long as he can ground fire with the galaxies. Although the harms dealing constant attritional damage. This is going to be either a huge mass dump or forcing yet again GFY to pony out of the water. Strategic launch detected. Only assuming that can come from GFY to pony who could be nuking his own navy. Although, no, it does seem that it's going to head to the north. Seemingly on a trajectory for the production of Fergus, who has been desperately trying to halt Millenwise's progression in the Navy since minute one. A whole bunch of ASF flying a little bit close to the sun here. Is this a prediction nuke? Is it? Oh, no, it's not. I was about to say, is he going for the snipe? No, he was not, but he is killing off the tech. And with the tech gone, Fergus is all but eliminated from this Northern Navy as the battleship count is going to continue to grow very quickly for Millenwise, and it will take some time for Fergus to get T3 Navy again. And he is already losing the battleship war, I would believe. He's already got two battleships versus a three on the field for Millenwise. Millenwises are admittedly quite hurt, whereas Fergus has a bit more HP and he does have those frigates to throw in front of it. Although the frigate numbers are dwindling. Could maybe do with some more naval yards, although I don't know if he can... I mean, he can afford it now, but not with battleship production. The battleship with a nuke is nearing 90% completion. And you have to fear where that could possibly go. The anti-nuke for Fergus nearly loaded. Although he could just wait. The tides of war seemingly shifting in the favor of Millenwise. He could just wait for that nuke to be loaded. And hold off on firing it. Until he can just move in and kill that anti-nuke from the shore. The naval engagement down here did get rid of the tech for GFY to Pony and has really somewhat shut him down in terms of overall naval presence. He no longer has a navy to rival his opponent, although Leto has dumped a ton of mass here in response. Absolutely massive, 150,000 mass on screen, zooming in, 100,000 in the base of Deponi, and I'm sure he will happily scoop that up and turn it into something scary and or dangerous. The moment he gets a reprieve from his opponent's navy. navy. 54 kills on this command class aircraft carrier. 39 on the galaxy. Trying to make efficient use of those T3 naval units is Leto. Do we have any game enders on the way for Team 1? They've been ahead for quite a while. A game ender would not be surprising. Strategic launch detected. Where is it? Am I blind? It's the nuke from the battleship, and it's going to be used to take out some more production of Fergus. The Oh no, it's going to be going for the T3 mass extractors up here for Fergus. And that's going to be a bit brutal, as he's already behind Millenwise by a decent clip. And that's going to just cement him as at nearly 200 mass a second behind his opposition. And it definitely feels like Team 1 is snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. They had such a great play here in the middle with XX7. But now with Novaxes coming online in mass with a seemingly nuclear a barrage of nukes being thrown at Fergus. It's getting more and more difficult for Team 1 to find footing to take large strikes on their opposition. Air has been relatively in the control of Team 2, or of Team 1. It was in the control of Team, team 2 for quite a while, but now is 
maybe shifting back to them as there are three and make that four players with T3 air production, all four players, including Joseph. So who we have to give props to did not leave the game and is now up to a respectable income of 160, rivaling that of the air player at 198 for team one. And Millen Wise going to continue to deal attritional damage, going to continue to be a nuisance with torpedo bombers. The bane of the existence for Fergus is inescapable. Do we have another nuke building? Is this building another nuke? It is, isn't it? Yep, I think that's the one that built the original nuke, and I think it's building another one the only one building a nuke critically and I think Millen Wise is probably well aware that he needs to keep it safe up to 65 kills and 23,000 mass killed how did the nuke launcher for uh for the pony fare it did manage to get 37,000 mass killed which is respectable the pony trying to use mass corsair against the navy of leto not sure how effective that'll be. Leto trying to go yet again into mass nuke sub. Although at this point, how difficult is it going to be for him to realistically get those nuke subs into a position without dying? Mermaids trying to be used in a defensive manner and the aircraft carrier, the command class here, shooting down as many cormorants as it humanly could imagine. 76 kills and rising. Gonna hit! Another rank in veterancy if left to its own devices. You're gonna need a lot more torpedo bombers than this to take down this behemoth of an aircraft carrier. And once it gets another rank of veterancy, it'll get another injection of HP and get that little bit more regen. The mermaids probably want to get them as close to the aircraft carrier as you can to eat up those torpedo bomber volleys. Up to max rank of veterancy now. 45 HP a second, and it goes down with nearly 100 kills. That that aircraft carrier was worth its weight in gold. Although Leto wishing he had more like it, I'm sure. The SCUs are quite oppressively building harms. How many harms is, is Deponi at? 25, even more than I built in that one Selkie game. Although... I'm pretty sure overall I built more than 25 between the nukes and the torpedo bombers and everything else. I lost quite a bit very quickly. Leto asking for mass. I can only assume that is for some kind of game ender. He needs something to pull himself and his team from the brink of defeat now. As the Northern Navy is capitulating, the nuke battleship is halfway past the halfway point on another nuke. The Navy of Millenwise falling back to deal with the remnants of Fergus's Navy. Although it is all done but the singing for Fergus, he does not have a way to hold off Millenwise's forces for much longer. SCU going down here to broadswords, assumedly. as we're waiting to see what Team 1 can do. A second Novax finished up, a third now on the way for Bob the Noob. Is there an anti-nuke in his base? Huh, there isn't. I was just looking at it, I was like, wait, that's weird. I saw the Stone Ager and then I was like, wait. Where's his, where's his anti-nuke? He, he just didn't build one, apparently. Did either air player build one? Yeah, there's a nuke eliminator here for uh, Bob the Noob. A strategic launch detected, this time from Team 1, which I believe that is a first. Where is that heading? It's heading southwest. It's heading towards the base of Bob the Noob. Will it land? Will it get any meaningful damage? If they've scouted properly, they know that this nuke eliminator, you could in fact get an edge nuke in. Ah, no you couldn't. Now if this is going for Bob the Nuke's base, 
or not Bob the Nuke, Bob the Noob's base is going to be a pitiful inquiry into nuclear hellfire as it will be shot down and indeed is going to be a nuke limiter more than capable of dealing with one nuke has four anti-nukes loaded is the battleship nuke still alive the nuking battleship is still alive and is currently nearly done with a second nuke and with the remnants of Fergus's naval production experiencing rapid unscheduled de deconstruction, as Icy Nightmare is, I'm sure, happy to hear me say, the hopes for the Orange Seraphim are all but eliminated. He control K's or gets killed. Nope, that's control K. And his base going to be transferred over, most likely to Leto, who has been trying desperately to help his ally with air forces. Although air forces only do so much when you're up against a lot of boats. I guess unless you're Deponi, in which case they do everything. Deponi has... Deponi is allergic to boats. He built a bunch of frigates, but he is allergic to anything above T T1. If it's not a frigate or a, or a submarine, it's dead to Deponi. Over here, like, I will win Navy with harms and torpedo bombers before I dare build a battleship. Which, while I, I, while I hate it, you have to respect it. Is this nuking the Navy? Don't tell me he's going to nuke the Navy and kill multiple nuke battleships again, or nu nuclear subs again. Can I check if these are building? No, I can't. Uh, the nuke flies past the Navy, fortunately for, uh, for Leto, but does manage to land snap dab in the middle of his production. Doesn't lose the HQ or the newly produced battleship, which I'm sure he's happy about. I don't know what GFY Deponi gets out of nuking the uh, production. hes It's not like he's fighting a production war here. He's fighting a do-you-know-how-to-counter-harms situation here. As Novaxes have left the base of Leto in ruins. Novaxes are slowly strangling out Leto, who has just... He's played a blinder of a game, but he has not quite earned the right to claim victory. Despite all of his great plays, another nuke ready with the anti-nuke dead. Is he is he going to nuke right here? You don't nuke right here. Where's this nuke going? It's going to the main base of Brian Swain, who we earlier were talking about not having an anti-nuke. You can call that foreshadowing, but I didn't know how this game ended. I just I literally got this replay from Millen Wise because we're going up against each other in the tournament and said I'm going to cast it and throw it up. So I ha I didn't review it. Uh, for anything but a desync. As the nuke lands and Brian Swain. It, but if you want to give me credit and say I was foreshadowing, which is a high level storytelling thing, go for it. <laughs> As Brian falls to the nuclear hellfire, Leto and XX7, who we haven't spoken about much but has played a pivotal role for Team 1 and their early success is going to experience death via nukes and battleships, it would seem. A Yelona Os was started up by XX7, but the chances of that finishing are, are nil. How many strap bombers is this? That's a ton of strap bombers coming in for Leto. Can he manage anything? Or is this just going to result in failure? The, the strategic bombers come in. They're targeted onto an SMD, but there's another one. There's two SMDs. You fool. You may get one, but that one I don't even know if it has two loaded. The other one has four. And you won't even get one because the extensive shielding around the base of Deponi. And the follow-up air response. And this game is all over but the singing, I would say. As we have Janus now fighting off strategic bombers, which is interesting. Millenwise has Janus. 
Or I, I hovered over one of these and I swear it said Janus. Are they all Nafas? Did somebody give him one Janus just to fuck with me? <laughs> I guess so. As the base of XX7 falls apart and he dies to a Yathoda. Much earlier on, he used the Yathoda to devastating effect towards Team 2. And now he falls at the hands of that very same technology. The Cybran Sentinel Leto is holding out. But I don't know for how much longer in this epic hour-long game. And he control K's. And I'd like to thank you all for watching. You all have been beautiful. I'll see you in the next one. Come check me out on Twitch. I should be streaming it. Uh, my tournament gameplay. And afterwards we will be playing some games. You all are beautiful. Thank you to the Patreons. Go down below and maybe consider joining the Patreon or joining the channel membership. Both of them help me out tremendously. Or even doing a super thanks. If you have a comment that you feel needs to be seen by the world and you have a spare couple of dollars laying around, you can get a comment highlighted with the amount you donated below this video. With that out of the way, let's go to the Patreon outro. Y'all are beautiful. This is Willow, signing off.